Hello everybody, Neff here. And as we watch this beautiful sunrise, we are back in Busky. And as the sun comes up, you can see there's some stars there that are slowly fading out. And it's getting brighter and brighter, the world's getting brighter and brighter. The clouds, the sky, everything gets brighter. And soon we'll have full daytime. And the whole reason we have a sun is because the game has a uh, full day-night cycle now. So the days are 24 minutes long. And um, yeah, so the sun goes up, moon goes up, and everything tints and gets dark and works as it should. It all seems very simple, but there's actually quite a lot of like math and stuff involved in it. But yeah, and there are stars too, but you can't see them now because it is uh, daytime. Well, I guess you might have just seen them. But I'll show you those again later. So yeah, um, I kind of want to get a move on here because I've recorded this a few times and I kind of don't want the video to go on too long. I have a terrible tendency to ramble, so um, yeah, I'll just hurry up and get on with this. But yeah, so Busky, we're back in Busky because, I mean, again, I made the game a long time ago, but uh, and I've jumped back in every now and again to work on it, but haven't really ma massively jumped in and done kind of serious work. But this time around, I've needed a programming project, so I'm back in this time. And I've gone into the, the most complicated project I've ever made. So yeah, and went back to Busky. But yeah, so the nice thing is because I haven't worked on, or because I've, it's been a long time since I've worked on Busky, I've got a lot better as a programmer and I know a lot more about OpenGL and that sort of thing. So nowadays I'm doing stuff I've never even done before. Like uh, I'm doing shaders and stuff now, which I've never even touched before. And that's been great fun. So yeah, so. Without further ado, I think I just want to talk about the changes and just kind of fly through them because there's a lot. And yes, the, the first thing and the biggest thing is that, um, for those of you who don't know, the thing that's kind of unique about Busky compared to a lot of these kind of block world games is that Busky has cubic chunks. And what that means is that the world is not just kind of like, you know, like quote unquote infinite horizontally, but also vertically. So what that means is, that you, you know, it doesn't just go really far that way and really far that way, but also that way and that way. So yeah, so because there's no real top or bottom, we can kind of have different layers to the world, which is something I've always wanted to have. And I kind of showed it off in a previous video, but I didn't really show it off much, and it uh, wasn't really fleshed out, so... Now I kind of want to show it off more, so... Without further ado, I might as well show you one of those layers. So, we could go up, but... Ignore that, spoilers. And I guess we'll go down first. And now the funny thing is that if I start digging down here, and uh, keep in mind, I'm in creative mode, so I just dig instantly. But the problem is that there's a slight chance I will miss the layer, because... Uh, this happens in Dwarf Fortress too, when you dig down you often just miss the caves. So hopefully that doesn't happen. It never happens in testing, it has happened multiple times today in recording, so hopefully not now. Please, please, please find a cave. Please. Please. Oh, there we go. Oh god, the chance- it's so few times that has happened. <laughs> see, if I look up there, you can see there's our tunnel up there. And these are the caves. So the caves are kind of like- they see they're quite cramped, that's, in, by, that's intentionally. But they're just these stone caves where like the uh, the ceiling and the floor kind of undulates and you have to find your way around. And um, it's kind of cool though, sometimes you get quite close, you have to dig through. But uh, they have this kind of fog in them to try and limit your vision. But uh, it's brown right now and I think the brown's a bit, you know, kind of poopy, so I think I might change it. I had it set to black fog earlier and that worked, I think, a bit better. The thing is the caves are also quite bright, I need to make them darker. We don't really have a proper lighting system right now, I'm debating two different systems to use. Either kind of block lights or dynamic lights, but... Um, or a combination of both. But I'm thinking, for now, I kind of just want to make it that the cave is darker, so I might just use a shader to tint the whole thing darker. Oh, pardon me. My um, voice is slightly going. Because, um... Oh, sorry, one second. And I'm back, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, just a bit of a cold right now, so my voice is a bit... Ooh. But anyway. So, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, currently, the way the layers are done right now is I can actually set a tint for any layer, so... Any layer could have a tint, and I might just tint the whole like, terrain and do that. Also, the fog is a bit intense, you can't see very far, but that isn't intentional here. But I might change that later. And yeah, so that's this layer. This layer is just quite a basic layer for getting your ores, but um, like your basic ores. And then once you go beyond that, you have to go down to the next layer, which we will go to now. So I'm just going to dig down, 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 down. Nice thing is I can't miss this layer. Oop, and see the stone going, turns blue down here. That's a bit of a strong transition, I might change that, but you know. So if we go down, and down, and down, and down, and down. And we have to... Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's quite a big drop this time. So, um, yeah, this layer is like the spoopy one. It's kind of inspired by things like, um, you know, like the Mushroom Biome in Terraria or those kind of games. It's kind of going for this kind of like kind of like this fungal forest, this kind of bioluminescent vibe. That's why everything has this kind of glowy effect to it. Like the grass is kind of glowy. Oh, it's actually not grass, it's uh, moss. And I'm in creative. So it's moss, as I said. And um, we also have long moss. Eh, don't ask about that. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better name, so it's long moss. We have these giant mushrooms. They're actually the bigger version of these little ones, which we find. And you might have seen there were some red mushrooms growing up in the caves upstairs. 
upstairs up, up in the next layer oh god but yeah it even kind of almost looks like we're outdoors here but if you look we do have, still have a ceiling but yeah it's kind of cool i have a lot of plans for what to put down here i want to have some more kind of magic -y stuff down here also the water we have some pools of water and i kind of want to have like a fishing system but i like to put different stuff in the pools of water down here than as opposed to open the surface in fact i kind of want to do the dwarf fortress thing where this is like a freshwater pool but the water on the surface is like the sea so it's like salt water but yeah i'm getting ahead of myself now so Anyway, that was this layer. That's pretty cool. Let's go down again. Ooh. Now the next layer is very basic. It's not fleshed out at all, so we're just going to be very quick here. See, so you have this creepy redstone. And if we go all the way down, you can kind of guess what we're going for here. Ooh. Ah! And we fall down. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, um, the hell layer. And it has this kind of creepy red fog, and everything is just red, and it's just awful. I might put lava here eventually, not really sure. I'm kind of debating whether to have lava on this layer or have move this layer down one and have a lava layer and then have this layer because i think <coughs> pardon me oh my voice i think that we kind of get to this a bit soon so i might have to change that but the idea is when you get down here you're just fighting demons and it's like really like you know awful so yeah and this is kind of like the lowest layer you can kind of currently go to again we have we can put as many layers down as we want to it doesn't actually affect performance so we can just keep adding them if we want to and um, yeah so currently this is the lowest layer but right now there's not much to show down here so i'm just going to go and use the magic of editing to go back up to the surface. And we're back. So we're back in the overworld here. And where's the sun? Oh, it's kind of midday-ish, so... Again, spoilers. It's kind of midday-ish, so yeah, that's kind of good. Because I want to get stuff done here before it gets too dark. So yeah, and we have to look at the upper layers now. Which means we go up. And as you can probably... You've probably seen a couple of times. There's something up there. So if I just no-clip here and go zoop. You'll see something. The overworld comes... Fades away and this comes into focus. And what is it, though? Like it around the edge here. Ooh. Ooh. We have the Skylands. Or Sky Islands. Or whatever you want to call them. Words. So yeah. This is like just a giant slab of rock with some dirt on it. And they're kind of like reminiscent of the Sky Islands in like old Minecraft or like Terraria and games like that. So yeah, these are pretty cool. And they're kind of some normal grasslands by them. But we have these giant mushrooms. Which are actually the big version of the small mushrooms we had downstairs. I keep saying stairs. But there's no stairs. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long day. I've recorded this a lot of times. I need to stop. Um, yeah, but this is the Sky Islands. I have, like, I'm kind of going for, like, a Jack and the Beanstalk kind of vibe here. I think it'd be really cool if you, like, you know, in the overworld, you actually place, like, a little seed, which turns into, a, like, a giant beanstalk, and you need to climb it to get up here. Which I can think of a way to do that, so I think it will work, and it will be pretty cool. And, um, yeah, that'll be, like, an early progression up to the, the upper layers. So, um, yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool. And once you get up here, there'll be, like, giants or trolls or anything. So that's the Skylands, they're pretty cool. They're not too fleshed out yet, just this, but again, I can add loads of features to them later. And yeah, the, even the mushrooms, they're, I'm planning on having lots of different varieties. It's just right now, the structure system kind of only likes having one structure, so I have to change that, so yeah. Yeah, I said the structure system. Currently, the trees use the structure system. It's really weird, but it, it's powerful. Just trust me, it'll, it'll make sense eventually. Essentially, I can generate anything, whether it's a tree or a building or anything, so that's nice. Anyway, sun is going down, must move fast. So I need to go up to the next layer. Now the next layer is very basic again. This one is not fleshed out at all. The next layer is kind of supposed to be like a heaven layer. So like clouds and stuff. But currently we have no cloud block. So it's just rock. Just rock. <laughs> just a bunch of rocks. And it looks a bit weird. But again, you have to imagine that these are clouds. And again, I kind of want to have flat bottoms like the clouds are the, down there. So they should look exactly like them. Just, you know, you can walk on them. And um, yeah, so this be kind of like a heaven layer. I'm planning on having like, you know, cherubs up here to fight. And uh, maybe like, I'm thinking like angels, but like biblically accurate angels. So that'd be pretty fun, pretty freaky. And um, yeah, so I kind of want to get around to doing that. But again, this is kind of late progression. I'm thinking doing the lower layers first and then coming up here. So I might start focusing on one layer at a time because it's hard to do with all of them at once. So um, yeah, so that's the heaven layer. And the final layer, which is up there, you probably already see it is the um, supposed to be like the space layer, kind of like the upper atmosphere layer. But of course, um, the issue is that currently the overworld sky has a tendency to render when I'm up, up in the uh, space layer. So I, the stars won't show, and I kind of want the stars to show. So I might wait for the sun to go down and then go up there, or just, you know, I'm just gonna like cut the video here and I'll come back when it's pretty much dark. And we're back. Okay, it's just getting dark now. You can see the stars are starting to come out, so I'm just gonna go up and go up one more layer to the space layer. Oh. Now, it will get dark quite quickly here, because there's no transition, so it will just go black. Yeah. There will be a transition later on right now, it just goes black. 
But this is supposed to be like the space layer, and it's like, um, I'm imagining kind of like a bunch of like rocks or asteroids kind of orbiting the planet that you're just hopping around on, up in space. I'm probably going to give it low gravity too. But I mean, yeah, I mean, like, honestly, this is probably not too far from what it's going to look like, although the stone will probably be different stone. I'm thinking more of a brown stone. Don't ask me why. It just seems more asteroid -y to me. So, um, yeah. And um, you can see the sun setting. Ignore that. That's not going to be the case. <laughs> that shouldn't be the case. And uh, you should only see one at the time where this is the moon or the sun. But currently, because reasons, um, that doesn't happen. And yeah, but you can see the whole star field now, which is nice. Um, you can even see the ones at the bottom, which again, you probably shouldn't see, but yeah, you know, it's whatever. The cool thing is, though, we can look at the stars for once, because the stars took quite a while to do. They're um, a lot more uh, complicated than... Oh god, I fell. I fell. Jeez. Okay, um, so yeah, that would have been quite a long fall. Uh, but yeah, the stars took a lot longer than they, you would imagine they would have to, to do, because uh, you'd think it's pretty simple to just, you know, distribute a bunch of, like, dots on a sphere... It's a whole bunch of ways to do it, and a lot of them are quite janky and have problems. And so I tried a whole bunch of ways, about six different ways, and in the end I went back to the first way and just fixed the problems. <laughs> because it was just becoming too much of a pain. But um, yeah, so it works, don't ask how it works, but it works. And the cool thing is, the stars always use the same seed, regardless of your world. So um, even though the world is random every time, the, um, the stars are not. So like, they'll always have the same sky. So technically you can make a constellation here out of the stars, and that constellation will always be there, in the same place, which is cool even relative to the sun and moon. The moon is kind of locked to the sun right now, that's just, you know... If I was being super realistic, it would slightly differ, but, like, currently it's just, like, Minecraft is just the same. It's easier. Well, it's not just that, it's also I kind of want to keep the sun in the night sky. I might change it though eventually so it has different, um, slightly different period. Um, yeah. So, um, let me think, is there anything else? Um, uh, not really, so that's the space. There's not much to show off here, just a bunch of rocks in space. So, I guess the thing to do now is show the one cool thing about this game is that because there's no like loading, no instances between the uh, the layers, like they're not separate, there's no loading screens, it's not separate dimensions, it's all just one thing. It means that even though we're in space right now, if I was to just say, what happens if I jump off? I go down, and I'm in the heaven layer. Now again, it doesn't look like much because it looks like rocks. But normally this would look like clouds and you'd see the difference. And um, yeah, so what if I jump off over here? And hopefully... Wait, did I... Did I miss the freaking... Okay. That has never happened before. <laughs> I may have missed the Skylands. I passed them by. Normally, I just managed to fall into a huge gap in between them and just fell down. Of all the times I've tested this, that's never happened, so... Um, yeah. But anyway, the sky or the heaven was up there, and now I'm in Skylands. And if I had not missed, I would have fallen directly onto these. Which is pretty cool. And, um, yeah. So, of course, you know, in the Skylands. And once again, if you jump off the Skylands... You fall through the clouds and back into the overworld, which is pretty cool. That's I really kind of like that. Now again, the layers are quite close together. They will be further apart in the future, but currently they're quite close together. It's just for testing. But um, yeah, it's quite cool. Anyway, it's currently night and you can't see anything, so I'm going to make it. Uh, I'll just make a new world and it'll be daytime. So one second, and we're back. I just made a new world just to go to daytime quickly. Um, yeah, so. Now if we just pop up here, I wanted to quickly just show off, we have a few new crafting recipes. You can actually um, do the early game survival stuff now without having to go into creative, so that's nice. So if I go, I'm in survival now. Because this is not a punch tree game, you don't just punch trees here. We pick up rocks from the ground. And once I've got more than one rock, because um, you see one rock doesn't do anything for us. But if I get a second rock, once we've got two rocks, we now use one rock to smash the other rock into a tool head. Let's make an axe head. And now I need um, some sticks, and as you'd imagine, you get sticks from leaves. So I break some leaves, and we get some sticks, or branches. I want to get some branches, I make those into tool handles. And now I have tool handles and a tool head, I can make a tool. So now I have a stone axe. And it doesn't render in the game yet. <laughs> Although it will eventually. Um, currently I'm deciding how to do the item rendering. I don't really want to just do the whole Minecraft thing of the 2D, kind of 2.5D items. In your hand, it'd be very easy to do that and very convenient, but it's like, I don't know, I just, I'd, I prefer, I'd really, I really want to do like th full 3D models. And I have 3D models in the game right now, so I kind of want to use that. It just means a bit of, it just means I have to make an item model for every freaking item, which is annoying, but what can you do? Though if I do it, it means I'll be able to like have it seen placed on every item as a block, which would be cool. Um, yeah, so with that, there's one more thing you can do, but honestly, I, the video's getting on now, I just want to hurry it up, so I'm going to go to creative mode. Because you can actually do this without creative, but if I get a bunch of grass, oh, I got a max, 
and I get a bunch of dirt. So any kind of dirt, any kind of long grass. And I got out of creative mode. You can now make mud bricks. And what these are used for, if I make a bunch of these, you can make a furnace. It's like a little kind of mud brick furnace. So it places down, it has no front and back with you right now, so it's in, well, it has no direction, so. So yeah, you get this, and if you right click this, we now have the furnace menu. And this is your normal crafting menu, but you can also do furnace things. So if I had, which I don't have, if I go to creative again and just get like a whole stack of ore and go out of it. If I open up the furnace, now I can make ingots. So we can make copper ingots. And again, this is kind of a temporary recipe. I'm gonna make, like later on, this will be a more complicated um, procedure to make ingots. But um, yeah, currently we just can make uh, ingots and use those to make copper anvils. If I make an anvil and I place it down over here and boob it down over there. So yeah, that's, I haven't actually made a crafting station yet, but that'd be like the furnace where you can make a, um, use the furnace to make, um, oh God, sorry, to use ingots to make tool heads. God, my brain. And um, yeah, so that'll be how you make your, your metal tools. And if you look at the creative menu right now, you can see we have a lot of tools. So you go from stone to like copper to bronze to iron, to steel to other things. And yeah, so there's a whole bunch there. And the menu is not big enough to hold all the items. So um, yeah, that's that's currently uh, busky. And actually, there's one more thing I guess I could show off. Is I, th I think I've shown this before, but uh, we have a mob in the game, but it's very basic. It's kind of a test mob. The texture is horrendously basic. It is supposed to be a boar. But I mean, like, you know, I, don't ask me why his like tusks are sticking out of the side of his head, not the front. But you know, they are. Kind of looks more like horns now. Like he's a lazy buffalo. And he keeps running away from me. God damn it. <laughs> but yeah, that's just a basic mob. He's just a basic passive mob. Passive mob. God, my words. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, what the game currently needs is, um, like, for, to get kind of a survival experience, we need hostile mobs. So that's one of the next things I have to do. And we need storage. We don't actually have storage in the game right now, so I have to add that, like chests and stuff. And once we have those two things, and I have mobs actually hurt you and damage you, then you basically have survival mode. So that'll be interesting to do. So that'll be probably one of the next things. Also multi-threading, because oh god. It's it's crazy this game doesn't have multi-threading. You would imagine it does, but um, it, it's just so well optimized it runs without it. But um, really would do better with multi-threading, because currently it chugs a bit when you walk across chunk borders, and uh, that's not great, so... And yeah, once I add that in, we butter smooth all the time. And yeah, so with that, we have to do that. And if you some, have to do some sky shader things, like it would be nice when the sun rises and sets if the sky turned kind of orange. And so I'll have to add that in. But yeah, that's all basic stuff. So yeah, fun stuff to do next. But that is busky, and that is quite a long video, but I had to talk about all this stuff I've done. I haven't made an update video in a while. So hopefully the next video will be shorter and probably come soon because I'm working on this pretty frequently at the moment. So hopefully I have stuff to show off soon. So yeah, again, the big thing though is what I mainly lack right now is just ideas. So I'm currently working through like just kind of open ideas for like what to put on the different layers and that sort of thing. So again, if you have any kind of ideas, suggestions, comments, feedback, do leave it in the comments. And uh, I read all the comments, so that'll be interesting. And yeah, so that's it. That's Bosky. And I guess until next time, guys, I will bid you adieu.